Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in with us to celebrate our shared ocean. My name is Sydney Spinella and I'm the Education Program Coordinator for Keep Pinellas Beautiful. The purpose of this video is to share a presentation on watershed health that was developed in partnership with the Girl Scouts of West Central Florida. Whether you're listening for the first time or attended the live event, we're happy to have you. This video will begin with a pre-recorded portion and transition to a recording of the live webinar event, including the live question and answer portion. Throughout the video, you'll hear from a few members of the KPB staff, including Pat DePlasco, Executive Director, Stephanie Lawler-Ellington, Programs Director, and members of the education team, Devin Frank and Leslie Kaplan. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a little bit of background info on KPB and World Oceans Day. Keep Pinellas Beautiful is one of almost a thousand affiliates across the U.S. of Keep America Beautiful. Here in Florida, we have 44 affiliates. Our nonprofit organization is dedicated to creating and fostering a community of environmentally responsible citizens through education, engagement, and action. We address critical environmental issues to protect and preserve our natural environment within our Pinellas County region. We're very glad to be celebrating World Oceans Day with you. Although the day may have passed, at KPB we think it's important to treat every day like World Oceans Day. The United Nations set June 8th as an international holiday dedicating to, dedicated to honoring our blue planet. We're celebrating the role our oceans play in our everyday life with the hope of inspiring action to protect our Earth's natural resources and use these resources responsibly. Let's celebrate a better future for our oceans as we learn about what we can do to help. By working together, we believe that we can protect and restore our shared ocean for generations to come. We're thrilled that you've joined us, and we hope to meet each and every one of you at one of our future community improvement events. So, in celebration of World Oceans Day, we're going to be talking a lot about water. How much of the Earth's surface do you think is covered in water? Take a look at this photo and, and try to think about it. How much of the Earth's surface is covered in water? Well, if you guessed around 71%, you are right. All life depends on the presence of water, meaning everyone, including humans, animals, plants, and even insects, need water to live. As we now know, there's plenty of water on Earth, but it's not always in the same spot. Water is constantly moving around. It can be contained in clouds or in the oceans, lakes, and rivers. It can be falling from the sky as rain or even flowing over land as runoff. So now we know that water moves around a lot. A watershed is the area of land that water flows through or across towards a larger body of water. Take a look at the diagram on the screen here. We can see houses, parks, benches, beaches. All of this would be part of the watershed as the water from the rain and in the lakes and rivers is all emptying into the large body of water there at the bottom. So we know that water is always moving and we all have some kind of contact with water wherever we live. Therefore, it makes sense to say that everybody lives in a watershed because the water that is rained on your house or that flows through the creek in your backyard must empty into a larger body. Here in Pinellas County, we have 56 watersheds. So no matter where you live in the state, what you do and the choices you make can affect your watershed and those around you. So now we know that we all live in a watershed and we depend on the water around us to survive. But can we just use any old dirty smelly water? No way, right? We want our water to be clean and healthy. Humans need clean water for drinking, food, recreation, like swimming and boating and even fishing. But humans are not the only ones who need clean water. Animals, plants, and insects rely on clean water also. Good water quality helps to support our natural ecosystems and the services that they provide. An example of an ecosystem service is trees making oxygen for us to breathe. Trees naturally make oxygen that humans need to survive, but the tree itself also needs water for it to survive. If the tree doesn't have clean water, it won't be healthy and it'll stop creating oxygen for us to breathe. Because water is so closely connected to the watersheds, a clean watershed can help ensure that the water in it is clean. Remember all of the land that the water traveled through is a part of a watershed. Therefore, if the land is dirty and polluted, it can pollute the water as well. So as we learned earlier, all life depends on the presence of water. And that water needs to be clean in order for humans, animals, plants, and insects to use it. We also discovered that the land in a watershed can change the health of the water. There are a variety of things that pollute our water, but today we're going to focus on debris or litter. 
Litter is waste, garbage, or trash that is out of place. The right place for trash would be a trash can, a recycle bin, or a compost bin. Trash that is out of place is anywhere else, like streets or parks or beaches. And who is responsible for the presence of trash and litter? Humans, right? Humans like you and me are the only ones who can do something to stop this problem. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA for short, is a government group that works to keep our environment safe and healthy. The EPA discovered that 80% of marine debris found in our oceans comes from land. You may think that most of the trash in the ocean is coming from people littering while they're out on a boat or on the beach. But this study by the EPA tells us that litter in our communities is making its way to the ocean and most of the trash found in the oceans did not come from boats, but from inland communities. So how is litter getting from our streets to the ocean? Whether trash is littered at the beach or generated hundreds of miles inland or off the coast, it can become marine debris if it's blown or washed into rivers or streams and carried to the sea. Rainwater can move litter from streets and parking lots into storm drains. So storm drains are a common infrastructure made to drain water, usually rainwater, from impervious areas like pavement on streets and parking lots. Without storm drains, rainwater would collect in our streets and cause flooding. The drains empty directly into streams and rivers and other bodies of water like Tampa Bay or the Gulf of Mexico. Have you seen these signs on a storm drain in your neighborhood? Because storm drains are, were designed to carry only water. They don't go through any filtering before they empty into water bodies. Therefore, when litter is washed down the drain, like we see the litter here in the photo, it flows freely through our marine environments. So let's see what this looks like in a diagram of our watershed presented by Stephanie. It looks very similar to some of the communities we live in. We have our water body, we have our hotels, we have a marina, we have our homes, some gas stations. It basically replicates a little town. Now, we talked about some different types of things that can impact this environment. And today we are focusing on trash or debris, but remember there are lots of different things that can have a negative impact. So make sure you tune in at another time to talk about some of those things. Today, I'm going to represent trash or debris in three ways. We have our small light materials or cereal. We have our heavier materials. So these might be plastics, um, glass, and those are going to be our sprinkles. And then we also have are very, very small items, which are going to represent by Kool-Aid Flex today. So just a few things for us to keep in mind when I'm putting this display on for you. So tell me, in your chat, what are some things that I'm gonna find in this environment and where will I find this debris? So what kinds of trash are you finding in your community and where do you find it? So while you guys are typing that in the chat, I did see someone say that they can't see the screen. Can everybody see the, the display here? Uh, just let us know if you can't and we'll try to help you. Um, but yeah, answer the question, what, what kind of litter have you guys seen out there? Awesome, I'm seeing plastic bottles, I'm seeing caps, I'm seeing hot poop bags, cigarettes. Yes, plastic can be found everywhere. All right, so let's put some of this into our environment. So we've talked about trash on our roadways. So sometimes when we're driving around, trash can come out of our cars, or especially when we're stopped at lights, we sit, tend to see it right along the sides of the roads. Sometimes when we walk out of our house, if you live near a primary roadway, you might see trash in front of your home, which of course isn't you littering, but it happens. We also see things out when we're out at the beach, right? Am I seeing, oh, masks and gloves right now are a big trash item, yes. Yeah, so more people are going out to the beaches and we do see trash and debris left after days at the beach. So we're putting some of those trash materials out. When I'm talking about tiny pieces of trash, what are some tiny pieces of trash we're seeing out there in our community? Someone did mention cigarette butts, I saw that. Candy wrappers, very good. And we might see those in our parks. We might see those around our schools. We also might see some of those materials coming from some boats that are out in the environment. So these are also things to consider. And out in our roads, a half-eaten food, yep, that's a piece of, that's a type of trash. 
All right, so as you guys can see, we've got some trash out here. Caps, plastic bottles, oh, dog poop. Yes, dog poop is its own problem. Not only is that litter, but that also can create other issues with nutrients. So that was a really good one to bring up. So bags of poop, yes, bottle caps, perfect. All right, so as you guys can see, we have a lot of different trash in our environment. This isn't a very clean community. And we have things that happen in this area. One thing that happens pretty frequently and might be happening right outside your window today is rain. So when we introduce our cloud of rain, we start to see some things taking place. So as Sydney mentioned, trash travels. So when that rain comes into the mix, things don't stay where they originated, where they started. And what I want you to really focus on is what's happening right here. These are our storm drains. So these storm drains help to transport that debris into our primary water body. You'll also notice the trash that's happening over here on the beach isn't just staying on the shoreline. It's making its way into the environment. So that is a trend that we see every day when we're out in the community trying to help pick up trash. The trash isn't staying where it started and not all trash is visible. So there is a few things I want you to see here in this display. The plastic lighter materials are floating. Okay, so those are the trash that we can see readily. Some of our bigger debris though, like this one right here, they sink. So we have a lot of trash that's not just staying on the surface, but it's also sinking to our ocean floor. We also have environments called wetlands that are collecting trash, so similar to our mangroves on our shoreline. So as those locations collect trash, they can start to clog up the environment there. Now that's what it's supposed to be doing, but that's not necessarily good. And then you can imagine the little corals that are living in our oceans, the oysters, that are living in our estuaries, those are having a really, really hard time with all this trash and debris. So it's something to consider when you're out and about and you're seeing trash. Again, trash isn't gonna stay where it's at, it's gonna travel. Ultimately, it can have a bigger impact on our waterways. And we don't really wanna live in an area that looks like this all the time, right? We wanna make sure we're out there doing something to help give back and clean up these environments. So what I'm gonna do next is pass this off to Devin. He's gonna talk to you a little bit about what happens when this debris enters into the environment. So we've seen it travel, we know where it's going, but how does that affect our wildlife? So thank you guys, and Devin, take it away. All right, well, hi everybody. My name is Devin Frank. I am the Education Program Assistant here with Keep Pinnell's Beautiful. And I'm going to be picking up the conversation and talking about what happens to litter once it gets into the environment. So now that we have seen how litter travels through the watersheds, let's talk about what happens to it while it's interacting in the environment. So I want you guys to write in the chat, what do you think can happen to animals who come in contact with litter in their homes? What do you guys think? What's going to happen to the animals out there if they come across a plastic bag or some fishing line? Yep, I'm seeing people can or the, the animals can be can, can eat it, they can choke on it. Yep, that's something that can happen, they can get hurt. Exactly, yep, these are, they can get really sick, it can make them very sick, it can cause them to die too, I'm seeing that as well. They can get strangled, they, they can get tangled in it. Yep, that's those, these are exactly the things that can happen to the animals. So when these animals encounter the litter, uh, they may become entangled in it too. So birds can get stuck in littered fishing line, might be unable to fly. Some animals may mistake the litter for their food, like you guys were saying, um, and try to ingest or eat it. Uh, for, uh, uh, an example here is that sea turtles love to eat jellyfish. And when plastic grocery bags float in the ocean, sea turtles think that the bags might be jellyfish, and they'll often eat the plastic, which can be really bad. So both entanglement and ingestion are harmful to these animals and can cause them to become really sick or even die. So now let's take a look at this photo that just came up on your screen. This image shows some of the most common trash items that we find in our oceans. When littered items end up in the ocean, they become what's called marine debris. Marine debris will move around in the ocean following the currents. These marine debris items are made from different materials, including paper, cardboard, plastic, aluminum, styrofoam, a whole bunch of different things. 
The different materials can take varying amounts of time to break down. Which material takes the longest to break down? Well, we have covered some of the answers for, the, for plastic items specifically here. As we go through these items, I want you guys to guess how many years it's going to take for these to decompose or break down. So the first one we're gonna look at in this image is the cigarette butt, which is near the upper left corner. So I want you guys to write in the chat, how long, how long do you think it's going to take for that cigarette butt to break down? Saying one to two years, two years, any other guesses out there? A month, six years, three, 30 days, a couple months. Uh, some people don't know. Yeah, these are very good guesses, guys. Uh, for, for the cigarette butt, it takes about one to five years. So that's how long it takes for that to break down into little bitty pieces and, and basically essentially disappear from the environment. So next, let's take a look at plastic bag, which is, I even have to find it. There we go in the upper right hand corner of your screen. I want you guys to guess again, how many, how many years until the plastic bag disappears? I've seen some, there's one that's 20, 50, seven, never, seven, eight. Ooh, you guys are popping in lots of answers all at once here. 30, seven, 100, 15. These are very good guesses. For the plastic bag, it's about 10 to 20 years. So you guys were all pretty close in guessing that. But I want you guys to think, a plastic bag, you might use it you know, when, when you go grocery shopping. You use it for maybe 15 minutes to 30 minutes to bring your groceries home, put, uh, put it into your fridge, and that's it. And then you throw the bag out and it ends up in the environment for, for like we said, 10 to 20 years. That's probably enough time for an animal to find it and end up uh, ingesting it or getting entangled it or something like that. All right, next, plastic, we're, we're gonna do three all at the same time that all have the same, uh, the same time frame here. So we have plastic beverage holder, styrofoam cup, and foam buoy. Those are the three that are circled in red on your screen. So they're all the same number. What do you guys think? How long until they're gone? How many years? One year, 200, 500, 15, 7, 20, 6, 100, 5. Wow, we're all over the place with this one, but those are all very good guesses, everybody. So for, for these three, it's a three-way tie for 50 years. So it takes 50 years for these items to disappear from the environment. All right, moving right along. We're going to go to the bottom left corner of the screen, plastic bottle. How long do you think for a plastic bottle to disappear from the environment? Something you would use to drink water or soda, something like that. Got 100, 1,000, 75, 3, some say never, 90, 30, never, 450, 30, 70, 40. Yep, you guys are kind of getting the idea. You, you're, you're, you're starting to increase that number, which is kind of what we're trying to show you here too. So yes, it is about 450 years until that disappears. That is how long it would take for that to break down and disappear in the environment. A very, very long time. And then the last one we're gonna do on this is right in the center at the top, that's fishing line. How long until fishing line disappears if it ends up in the environment? If it breaks off of a fisherman's rod, how long do you think it's gonna take for that to disappear? 550, 800, 500,000, it looks like someone said, never, 609, that's very specific, I like that, 100, 10,000. You guys at 20, yep, you guys are starting to get the idea that it's gonna take a long time. And some people are guessing right on, it is 600 years. That's how long it takes fishing line to disappear. That is probably enough time for it to get stuck on a coral reef and for a sea turtle to accidentally swim into it. So. Uh, as we can see, these items take quite some time to disappear. And now that we can see how long each of these items takes to break down, some hundreds of years as, we, as we've seen, think about what these, these items are made from. Which material, we're gonna have a poll that's gonna pop up here real quick. Which material usually takes the longest to break down from these list of items that's gonna pop up? And you can answer right in the poll. Here you go. All right, so which material of these do you think takes the longest to break down? Paper, plastic, or cardboard? I want you guys to take your guess. <clears throat> One of them definitely takes longer than the others. Looks like everybody's voting. I'm still getting a few more votes coming in. I'll give it a few more seconds. <coughs> Uh, 
All right, looks like most people have voted. Let's go ahead and see what everybody said. All right. All right, so 90% of you said plastic, just a few people saying cardboard. Well, you guys pretty much guessed correctly. It is plastic. So plastic, which makes up most of the marine debris that we find now, makes up about 95% of all marine debris that's out there. It is a man-made product. It does not naturally decompose or break down. So this means it's not something that would naturally occur on Earth. Instead, it was invented by humans in a laboratory. So because it's not a natural material, nature has a hard time decomposing. So not only does plastic harm wildlife, destroy habitat, transport invasive species, and threatens the economy, it takes, as we've seen, a very long time for it to break down. As plastic litter continues to travel through our environment, the elements like wind, sun, rain, and waves will break it down very slowly over time. So I want you guys to think about the litter that you've seen outside. Usually, those items are not in good condition. They're, they might be broken, they're fragile, they're dirty. And this is because they've been exposed to those elements. Eventually, the trash items will break down completely after spending some time in the environment. As these plastic items break apart into smaller and smaller pieces, they eventually become so small that we need a microscope to see those small pieces. Once they get to this size, they're called microplastics. So microplastics are defined as pieces of litter and plastic that are, that are smaller than 0 0.2 inches across. So that's really small. These tiny pieces of plastic are hard to see and even harder to clean up. Microplastics are found in all depths of the ocean, meaning they're at the surface, they're in the middle of the water column in middle depths, they're even at the bottom of the ocean. They're even in the sand and the dirt on the ocean floor. They've, we found them in rivers. They're in our, even in our tap water that's in bottled water. It's even been found in beer. We have two, uh, two types of microplastics, which you see on your screen, called primary and secondary. Primary microplastics can be small beads that are used to make other plastic products and can be found in personal care products, like the ones that you see in the picture on the left. Even glitter is considered to be a microplastic. <clears throat> Secondary microplastics come from the breakdown of plastic products by the wind, waves, and sun, like we discussed before. The secondary micro microplastics typically come from single-use plastic items that litter our environment, like the ones we saw in the last image. These are items that are made to be used only, only one time and then thrown away. Can you guys name in the chat some common single-use plastic items? What are, what are some common single-use plastic items that you guys have seen? What do you guys think? We had some on, yep, a straw, very good. That is a type of single-use plastic water bottle, yep. Bags, yep, like grocery bags, very good. Even garbage bags, yep. Bottles, straws, bottles, yep. Yep, lids, uh, the, the plastic lids to cups, even cups themselves. Yep, bottle caps, um, balloons, that's very good. Yes, that is another type of single-use plastic. You got it. Yep, containers, bags, balloons. Yep, you guys, yep, styrofoam is actually a type of plastic. Absolutely. Yep, tablecloths could be if they're made out of plastic. You got it. Toys can be in time uh, 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 here and there, exactly. Yep, you guys are exactly getting it, for sure. So most of the single-use plastic items that we find during litter cleanups are items that could be replaced by reusable items or things that can be used a bunch of times before being thrown away. So I want you guys now in the chat, again, to think of some things that we could use in replacement of those single-use plastics we were just talking about, like straws, bags, and bottles. So what are, what are some other things we could use instead of those? Yes, like reusable bags, exactly, like cloth bags. That's exactly it, yeah. Metal straws, bamboo straws, absolutely. Yep, those can be used more than once. Yep, even, even uh, as someone just said the biodegradable bags. Yep, those, those are things that are more environmentally friendly. Yep, cloth diapers, absolutely. Yep, a hydro flask, absolutely. That's, that's a type of, of, of a water bottle that can be used many times. So yep, reusable water bottles, very good. See if any other answers pop up here. Metal bottles, yep, that could work too. Absolutely. 
yep, you guys got it. Yep. So it's, it, it can actually be pretty easy to find different items that are reusable to replace those single-use plastic items. Very good, guys. So now that we know what microplastics are, let's talk about why we should even care about them in the first place. Well, microplastics are a danger to our wildlife, which means our animals, insects, and plants. Uh, floating microplastics can transport invasive species or basically animals that don't usually live in an area and can cause harm to the animals that do live there. And they can also transport harmful microbes or microscopic animals or other living, living things. These microbes can make animals very sick. In 2017, uh, they'd already discovered more than 220 species of animals that were recorded having ingested microplastics. Eating these, these microplastics has been shown that it can cause slowed growth. It can alter an animal's ability to reproduce and have, and have offspring or babies. It can reduce a baby animal's chance at surviving. It can also cause tumors too. So plastic also just contains toxic chemicals itself. Toxic chemicals are chemicals that can harm the environment. It can harm humans, animals, plants, and insects. Uh, but also plastic can actually absorb uh, harmful, harmful chemicals that are found in the, in, in the water, like a sponge absorbs water. Basically, the plastic can have one million times more toxic chemicals on it than the water around it. When animals or humans eat this plastic, the body will absorb all those toxins. These harmful chemicals also collect in animals that are at the bottom of the, the, uh, the, bottom of the food chain when they eat microplastics. When bigger animals eat a few of the smaller animals, they take in all of those toxic chemicals that the smaller animals ate. Therefore, they have even more toxins in their bodies than the smaller animals did. So as you keep moving up the food chain, the amount of toxins in each animal gets higher and higher. This process is a fancy word called bioaccumulation. Basically, it means that animals at the top of the food chain will have higher levels of the harmful chemicals in their bodies. And did you guys know that humans are at the top of the food chain? Many of the things we eat contain microplastics in their bodies. We know of at least 49 different common fish species that humans like to eat, along with shellfish like shrimp and oysters have been documented to have microplastics in their system. Although we know that many humans, animals, plants, and insects have microplastics in their system, the Overall effect of microplastics, especially on people, is still unknown. Studying microplastics is a very new science. There are at this point a lot more questions than there are answers. So this makes it difficult to help solve this issue right now. However, there are some things that we can do to stop the spread of microplastics. And I'll pass it back to Sid. Yes, so like Devin said, it's up to all of us to protect our planet from plastic pollution and prevent plastic from entering the ocean by practicing the R's of the environment. You guys have probably heard of reduce, reuse, recycle before, right? But check out all the other R's are, that we can do to help save our environment. We can refuse along with reduce, reuse, recycle. We can remove, rethink, repair. There's a lot of things that we can do to make a difference. So one of the things that's important that we talked about is we can stop plastic and other litter from polluting our environment if we reduce the amount of trash that we make in the first place, right? We said earlier that humans are the ones making the trash, right? It's coming from us and the trash is becoming litter. So if we just stop making that trash, we'll have less litter, we'll have less things in our environment that are harmful. And you guys gave some good ways that we can stop making trash by using our reusable items that you guys mentioned, like our straws and cloth bags and, and reusable items. So we can refuse, another R word, we'll refuse to use our single use plastic items or even items that are considered microplastics. I know Devin mentioned glitter is actually a type of microplastic. I know when I was a Girl Scout, I used tons of glitter in all my projects. Um, so that's one thing that we can start to look for reusable options and move away from something that's considered a microplastic. The same with the, some of the uh, things that we saw in the photo, like our face scrubs and even some toothpaste has microplastic. And then we can reduce plastic use in general. We can try to avoid purchasing things that are made of plastic. And then if we do, sometimes we can't avoid it. Sometimes we have to buy something plastic, right? Well, we can reuse it as much as possible, another R word, reuse. 
And then after we're done reusing it and, and we've used it as many times as we can, we can then recycle it. Another one of our R words, right? We can recycle a lot of our plastic items like our water bottles and things like that. So another R word, our last R word is remove. We can remove litter from our environment when we see it and participate in community cleanup events in our community. I know I've seen a few people already ask questions about how we can get involved with that and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But possibly one of the most important things that we can do that I saw someone also mention in the chat as well is spread our knowledge, right? You guys have probably learned a few new things today you should go and teach others about marine debris and, if, and how it's affecting our watersheds. Educate your family, educate your friends and your classmates on the alternatives to single-use plastic and how they can make a difference too. So Keep Pinellas Beautiful has created a unique way to take action and prevent plastic litter. The Plastic Free Pledge is a promise to actively reduce the amount of single-use plastics you use. By taking the pledge, you can make a difference in your everyday life and you can encourage others to join you in making the promise to preserve our paradise. Take a look at some of the things here that are on the pledge. You don't have to pledge to all of them, but you can choose something that you know that you can do every day. If you know that you can bring reusable shopping bags, then you can check that off in your pledge. You can avoid plastic straws. I know I saw someone else in the chat say that a lot of restaurants are stopping giving out plastic straws and giving out more paper straws. That's a great thing too. And if you do go to a restaurant or somewhere that has plastic straws, you can say, no, thank you. I don't need that straw and, and just drink out of the cup or even bring your own reusable straw with you when you go out to eat. So we can skip, we can, we can reuse reusable food containers, lunch bags. I know someone said we can use uh, Tupperware. That was one of the reusable items that we can have instead of using Ziploc bags that we use once and throw out, we can store our food in Tupperware. We can stop releasing balloons. A lot of you guys realize that balloons are a single use plastic. They are made of plastic and a lot of times we blow them up once and then that's the end of them. So we can stop releasing balloons into the environment. We can stop using plastic balloons if possible. Um, and we can pick up litter when we see it and just make sure that we're disposing of our trash responsibly. That means if there is something that we have that's recyclable, we're putting that in the recycle bin. And if not, we're putting it in the trash bin because if it's not recyclable, we don't want to put it in the recycle bin because then that could mess up the whole bin. So a lot of these things on the pledge here, you can choose to do all of them or you can choose to do just a few. But either way, the virtual pledge link was emailed to you when you guys received the email with this link for the webinar. The link for the, the pledge was on there as well. And you can also find it on the Keep Pinellas Beautiful website um, if you are able to get on there as well. Uh, so your troop leaders uh, should be receiving once we wrap up this webinar and get all the info on where you guys are all listening in on um, your troop leaders will receive some stickers in the mail that says you pledge to 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 keep the, our paradise plastic free. Sorry. So it's, oh, you get a sticker for taking the pledge along with the KPB watershed steward patch for participating in this webinar. So you guys are now watershed stewards. You are experts on watershed health and how to keep our watersheds healthy and clean. So you'll get a patch for listening in on this webinar. And then you can sh uh, show your patch and show your sticker to everyone around you and show them your commitment to keeping our environment clean and beautiful. So first, we'd like to just thank our sponsors. So we couldn't put on this webinar and do what we do here in Pinellas County without the people you see here on the screen. They support our education initiatives along with a lot of other stuff that we do here at Pinellas County and, and keep Pinellas beautiful. So we've had a great time celebrating World Oceans Day with you guys. At this time, we are gonna open up for more questions. I know Leslie has been going through and, ask, and answering a lot of the questions that you guys have been sending in, but if you've got more questions, please send them in now so we can answer some of them live. Um, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in joining our community cleanups or even in our education or adoption programs, visit our website there or subscribe to our e-newsletter or give us a call, anything you wanna do. And for those of you that are not in Pinellas County, you most likely have a Keep America Beautiful affiliate in your county. Um, so if you wanna contact us, we can help you uh, find out who that is. If you wanna just do a Google search and see if you've got a, an affiliate there in your county. Um, all of our affiliates of Keep America Beautiful are working towards the same goal, which is beautifying our communities. Um, so please let us know if you're not in Pinellas County, but you're interested in getting involved, we can help you uh, get set up with the right group. And you can always come visit us in Pinellas County and participate in some cleanups with us here. 
Um, so let's open it up to questions here. I think I've seen a few come in. Leslie, if you want to kind of read out the questions and direct them to who you think will answer best. All right. I think this question is for Devin. So somebody wants to know how long does metal take to decompose or does it not decompose at all? That's a good question. I don't know the answer off the top of my head um, for how long it takes. Um, I believe metal in presence of salt water, which is what the ocean is, uh, will probably corrode um, and dissolve over time. Uh, it's something that I don't know too much about. Um, it's something I can look up and we can get you a better answer on that. I don't know if anyone else on the panel here knows a better answer about metal dissolving. So we do know from NOAA that aluminum can, which aluminum is a metal, so aluminum soda can that you may see would take 200 years to, to break down. Mm -hmm. So I, metal is up there with plastic and taking a long time to decompose, but metal is also a natural uh, substance. So it's not like it's creating the microplastics that we have from plastic. Um, but metal also does take quite a long time to break down. And aluminum, especially aluminum cans are something that we can recycle infinitely. We can take the same metal aluminum can and recycle it many, 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 many times and just keep making more, more and more products rather than creating a whole new can. Um, so aluminum is definitely something we should be aluminum cans throwing in our recycle bin because we can recycle that into another can and not have to use our resources to make a new one. Great. Thank you, Sydney. So somebody else wants to know, um, is glass a good alternative to use? In, in, in uh, instead of plastic, I would say yes. Glass is also a natural product. Um, it breaks down eventually actually into sand. Um, and glass is something we can definitely use multiple times, unlike some of our plastic that's very flimsy. Plastic will fall apart a lot easier than glass. Um, so glass is a great alternative to plastic. And again, it's a natural thing. It's, it's made in our environment. It wasn't invented. Um, someone discovered it, yes, but glass is natural and it's something that we can, again, recycle as well if we do use it a bunch of times and eventually have to recycle it. But glass is a great alternative. Nice. Thank you, Sydney. Um, we have a question. Why do people throw trash when they know that it's bad for the environment and that animals live there? Very good question, right? That's something that a lot of us have a hard time understanding. We know that it's bad, right? So why are people doing it? Why is it happening? Um, the first thing I wanna point out is that it's not always on purpose. Some people, sometimes litter happens on accident. I know I've accidentally littered. You may not notice that something fell out of your hand or fell out of your pocket or even flew out the car window if you open the window. Um, so litter is not always on purpose. It's happening on accident. Uh, so we can't really do anything about that besides maybe not make as much trash. Um, but some of the other reasons that we think people litter is because they just might not care. They might know that it's a bad thing to do, but it just they just don't care, which is sad. And then some people might not know that it's a bad thing. And that's why, like we said, educating our friends and our family is one of the best things we can do. Some people don't know that something is litter. For instance, cigarette butts. We've seen cigarette butts absolutely everywhere. They're the number one littered item in the world. And some people do not think of them as litter. So if we educate our friends and our family and let them know that something that belongs in the trash is litter. We wouldn't want cigarette butts or, or maybe candy wrappers or even gum sitting on our bedroom floor, right? Something that you would throw in the trash in your own house should end up in the trash in the environment too. Just because you're not in your house and you're just at the beach or something, that stuff is still litter. So something we can do is educate. Some people may not be educated and may not know that certain products are litter. So we said it happens on accident. That's why litter is out there. Sometimes it's on accident. Sometimes people don't know that it's litter. Sometimes people don't care that it's litter. Uh, I think those are ma the main reasons that people litter. If I've missed one, you guys can jump in, but those are the main reasons. So we have somebody else asking, what is the Keep America Beautiful affiliate for California? Where can they find that information? Very good question. Pat, I might throw that one over to you. You got Sorry about that. I was finding the, the unmute button. Um, we can, we can, you can Google "Keep America Beautiful California," and you can get that. Um, get find out the local affiliates there, or you can uh, shoot us an email at at uh, info at kppcares.org, and we can identify specific. You know, I can find out which city you live in, um, and where the closest Keep America Beautiful affiliate is to you. You can also contact Keep. 
uh, California Beautiful, which is the state affiliate, and they can direct you to, you know, to your local affiliate as well. So we have another question similar to those lines. Can children work to help keep Pinellas beautiful? And how do you look into that? Great Ooh, question. That's exciting. I like that one. Yes. <laughs> can children help? Absolutely. Children are probably the, the ones that can do the most, right? People are going to listen to you. Um, so what you can do is first off, educate your friends, like we said, spread the knowledge, spread what you've learned today, and that will help keep Pinellas beautiful. If you tell someone not to litter, that's keeping litter off the ground, right? You can spread your education, spread what you know. Um, and then the other thing you can do is check out our website. So if you go on kpbcares.org, it's listed on the screen right there. You can see the events that we're doing around the county. We do cleanup events all over Pinellas County. And again, if you're not in Pinellas County, um, we can hook you up with whoever, with, with an affiliate in your county. Um, we do just cover Pinellas County here. Um, but you can check out our website and see our upcoming events. Um, Right now, we're working on getting events put together under the new guidelines that are out um, for the pandemic. So there might not be too many listed right now, but we are excited to get back out there and get out there and clean the environment. So our children are definitely welcome at our events and we'd love to see you there. Um, so please check out our website for upcoming events. And again, just spread your knowledge. Let everybody know what you learned and how they can help make a difference too. We also have our Kids Can um, events as well. And that's where we have them twice a year, where um, our kids are invited, but they're also asked to bring one parent or bring an adult with them. But this is a kid-centered activity where you go through different learning stations and then you go and do a cleanup. So it's uh, designed just for you. Um, and we, we'd love for you all to get involved with us. So there's one more question. This is probably a little sensitive because everything is just so uncertain right now, but somebody asked, how are we going to pick up litter if we are in quarantine? Yes, so that is what we are working on right now. You guys uh, have probably seen the guidelines that have come out about wearing a mask in public and staying six feet apart and keeping our groups to 10 or less. Um, so we are going to hold cleanup events according to those guidelines. We are going to ask people to wear masks, our staff will be wearing masks, we're going to provide gloves and safety materials so that you're not touching the trash directly. Um, and we're going to make sure everybody is staying spaced up out and staying uh, six feet apart and following those guidelines. Um, so it will be different from what we're used to doing. And that's the case of the, that's the that's the case in probably everything we're doing nowadays. Um, but we are going to follow those guidelines and make sure everybody is safe while we're helping our environment. Another thing to consider guys is we have an adoption program where you're able to help clean up in your area. So one of the things that we like to emphasize right now is while we're not all able to get together in a broad, bigger community, we can take action right at home. So if you are interested in our adoption program, check out the information Sydney posted, give us a, an email and we will check your area, see what's available. We also provide supplies, material and support for those kinds of um, efforts. So you guys uh, let us know if you're interested and we'll get you more information. All right, so we have another question. Do you have a resource guide of items that are safe for the environment? Okay, of specific items, um, a resource guide, we, we don't have anything like that, you know, telling you specific brands or, or such to post or to purchase. Um, but we can tell you, you know, stay away from plastic, anything that has Less packaging is something that'll be better for the environment. Um, a, a lot of our food products, for some reason, are just covered in plastic packaging, and usually it's not, not necessary that they're like that. For example, produce. You can buy an apple and not have to put it in a plastic bag. You can go home and clean that apple before you eat it, but you can avoid that plastic packaging. Um, so that's one thing that you can do. Um, other than that, there are many, many, many resources out there um, that can tell you the background of a product and whether it is environmentally friendly, especially with microplastics. Um, there's many uh, apps and websites that you can look up, say your facial scrub, and it'll tell you whether what's in that, that product is a microplastic or whether it's natural. Um, so I would just suggest doing some research on the items that you have in your house to see if they are environmentally friendly. And if you find that something is not, um, you can start looking up different options instead of purchasing that one thing. Um, but again, a, a rule of thumb is definitely to try to avoid plastic, right? We've seen what happens to plastic in the environment. So if we can avoid purchasing things that are made of plastic, single-use plastics, anything like that, 
um, that'll definitely help our environment. And then, yeah, I would say do your research on the products that you use regularly and see if there's better alternatives that are more environmentally friendly. And as, as Sydney mentioned earlier too, there's a, an organization called the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. They might have information on their website about specific products that contain uh, different types of plastic materials and other safer versions of similar products to use that would be less harmful to the environment. Denise, this question is for you. Um, there's a, a, a attendee asking, can I do a Girl Scout project on preventing littering? Absolutely. So depending on uh, what grade level you're in, um, as you get a little bit older, this could be something that you could do as your um, bronze, silver, or gold award. Um, or if there's, if you guys wanted to keep it and do something as a troop, like Stephanie was saying, you know, the ADOPT program, that's something you guys could do at any level as a troop. So if that's something you're interested in and don't know how to go about it through Girl Scouts, just, just have your mom or your troop leader give us a call and uh, we'll help you out with that. Great, thank you. So this is a good one. We really didn't cover this, but this is really important. I heard dumping cooking oil in the sink will contaminate water. Do you know anything about that? That is a great question, right? We talked a lot about water today and, and clean water and why it's important. And things like cooking oil and even some of our cleaning products and paint especially, those things can harm our water. Um, so in Pinellas County, we do have the option to bring those things to our uh, solid waste facility where they will properly recycle them and make sure that they're not contaminating the water. Um, I, again, if you're not in Pinellas County, there's, I'm sure, many resources that you have available to you. I know in some, I think in Hillsborough County, there's an oil recycling station um, that they have around a lot of local restaurants where you can just bring your, your reused cooking oil. So once you use it to cook, you can pour it back into a bottle or whatever you need to, to hold it. And then you drop it off at these stations and they'll properly recycle it and make sure it's not contaminating our water. And again, it's not just cooking oil, things like paint especially is, is bad for our water. So we can make sure that we're bringing those to the proper locations rather than just throwing them in the trash or dumping them down the sink. Does anyone else have, have an answer to that? Yeah, another way that you can do that at home is if you put it in a cup and then put it in the refrigerator so it solidifies, you can then scrape it out and throw it away in your trash can. Um, so if you don't have those resources where you have an accessible recycling facility, that is a quick and easy way um, to manage your grease, but it does have an impact on the water and it has an impact on the infrastructure. It can mess up your pipes too. So it's something to consider if you're dumping your grease in the sink. Alrighty. Um, somebody asked about sunscreen at the beach. Ooh, good question. And what about sunscreen use at the beach? Yes. So that's another thing where there's a lot of products that are natural that we can use that won't harm the water. I'm sure I, Devin might be able to speak a little bit on how sunscreen can harm our coral reefs. Um, but yes, there are many natural products. For example, just the one that I use is uh, Stream to Sea. And it's made from natural minerals um, that are not, you know, chemicals. And that's uh, better for our water. It won't harm our coral reefs. Um, so you can just, again, look at what you're purchasing before you purchase it, see its environmental uh, impacts, and make the decision to choose something that's more environmentally friendly. Usually the mineral-based sunscreens are the ones that are more environmentally friendly. Um, they are different than the chemical ones. The mineral ones are made to kind of stay on the surface of your skin rather than rub into your skin, like the chemical-based ones. Um, yeah, Devin, do you have anything else to say about that? No, not, not too much. I mean, that pretty much answers the question. I know there's it's, uh, there are specific chemicals that are in the chemical-based sunscreens. I can't remember what the chemicals are offhand, but like oxy something. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I can't remember what it, exactly what it is. But, um, but uh, basically, studies have shown that those, those chemicals can harm coral reefs. Um, but I think there might be studies coming out too that might be showing they're not as harmful to, to coral reefs as was previously thought. So it's worth doing a little bit of, of research into, but like Sydney was saying, you may as well play it safe and see if you can't find a sunscreen to use that's made out of all natural, um, all natural products rather than chemical. So it'll probably be better for you and for the environment. That's right. So we just have one more question. Um, Denise, you might be able to answer this, or Sydney. Um, if she wants to share with her troop 
who missed this presentation, is this material able to be shared? Yes, I can definitely share the PowerPoint um, with, with Denise and she can, uh, you know, send that out to whoever may want to share it with their troop. Um, I did start recording uh, when the watershed table demonstration was on. Um, so as long as we're able to, it might be too big of a file to really send out. So we'll have to see about how we can share the video file. Um, but we can definitely share the PowerPoint um, with you, with you guys. And again, if we also do a lot of education in our communities. Um, so if you're in Pinellas County, we can set up an education event with your individual troops to learn more about a specific topic. Um, and again, if you're not in Pinellas County, we can uh, find an affiliate that may be able to help you with that. Um, but yes, I can definitely share the PowerPoint that has you know, the basics of what we went over. And if you want more info, uh, please feel free to email us. If you wanna set up another event, please feel free to email us. Um, the video, we'll have to see. I haven't, I haven't tried uh, sending video files. Usually they're quite large and they're not easily emailed. Um, so we'll have to work on that before we can say whether the video can be shared or not. And so, also plan to follow us online because we will be doing more online presentations. We did a trivia night a few weeks ago. We're going to be doing some other activities like that, ways for you to engage outside of just being with um, other Girl Scouts. However, we want all of you guys to participate in all of our projects. So follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and keep up with some of the projects we have going on. Yeah, when we send out the uh, link for um, you guys to complete your um, evaluation of this program, we'll, we'll try to include as many links to um, you know, anything that they have coming up, if we can get a link to this presentation. So we'll give you as many resources as possible. Um, before we go, there was, um, Kenzie was asking in the chat, um, how, how do things break down? Can you, can you tell them a little bit more about the process? You know, we know it takes like plastics longer than, than paper and stuff, but can you explain to them a little bit more about that process? Yeah, I can start answering. If someone else wants to jump in, they can too. Um, so yeah, we were talking about plastics breaking down. Um, so plastics are made of uh, materials that are, that are all man-made. So none of it is natural. So if you compare that to like an apple or an orange or even cardboard or paper, those are all natural things. I mean, yes, cardboard and paper have been manipulated a little bit, so they're not completely as natural as they used to be. But when something is natural, it breaks down uh, through the elements when it's out in the environment. So like uh, the wind, the rain, the sun, um, all, those, all those types of things just cause it to sort of break apart into smaller bits. And if it's, an, if it's a natural item, like an apple core or paper or something like that, it will dissolve, uh, return back to its original natural components over time. But when you have something like plastic that's made out of all um, non-natural man-made materials, what happens is the same process happens to that too. So you have the wind, the waves, the rain, the sun, all that stuff is going to be working on the, the plastic too. And what it does is it just breaks it into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until it becomes microplastics. So the, the plastic doesn't actually disappear. It just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And then once it's become smaller, it becomes even smaller. Like it just, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. That, that's, that's all that it does. And that's, that's how the term microplastics came to be, um, is because the plastic doesn't actually go away all the plastic is actually still out there. And it's even gotten so small now that microplastic isn't even the smallest term. There's now something called nanoplastics. And that's for plastics that are even that much smaller than microplastics. They had to come up with a whole new term. So um, I hope that answers your question. If anyone else has anything to add to that, by all means. Yeah, and it's something, it's important to, to remember when we're looking at these numbers of how long it takes to break down. Um, a lot of people use the term of to completely disappear. And as Devin mentioned, that's not the case. So you have to really think, how long does it take to continue to get smaller within the environment? Um, so fragmentation is a big word that, that's used to, to describe that breaking down process. It fragments or breaks into tiny pieces. Um, but we haven't been around for, you know, I haven't been around for 400 years, so I don't really know what it looks like when it gets to be 400 years and how tiny it actually is. So 
Um, just things to consider when you start hearing terms like it takes 500 years to disappear. Does it really disappear? So that's why you want to consider the products you're using and, and how long it will really be with us. So we have one more question. It's a pretty general question, but when is the next event? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so as we mentioned, um, we are adjusting to these new guidelines um, with, with what's happening in the world. So I don't have an exact date for you yet, but what I would say is go on our website, go on kpbcares.org, um, and if you're able to, it's going to ask you to sign up for our newsletter, um, and please do that. We will update, we keep all of our volunteers updated through our weekly e-newsletter sent to your email. Um, so that can keep you updated and we'll be making announcements as soon as we are able to start uh, hosting events again but uh, please bear with us as we said we're adjusting to these new guidelines we're working with the cities in pinellas county to um, start reserving the areas that we want to host cleanups um, so it's definitely a process and I, I can tell you we don't have any events like tomorrow um, but they will be coming in the future as we as we adjust to these to to what's happening and I would suggest to keep really keep an eye on that listing because in the next month or so we have events that I believe will be popping up in July on some of our coasts, especially uh, driven around uh, 4th of July. So if you are living in Pinellas County and interested, just keep up with our, our upcoming events because we will be posting them as soon as possible. And if you had any questions that weren't answered or that you'd like to just get more info on, please feel free to email us. Um, that's what we're here for. We definitely want to continue the conversation with you. Um, and that's how we make a difference. We just continue this conversation and keep talking about it, keep thinking of ways to make a difference. Um, and we will, we will make a difference. So if you have any questions that weren't answered, please shoot us an email or give our office a call and we'd love to further discuss that with you guys. Do we have any any other questions? I think I saw one um, person had asked, "How do you how do I spread my knowledge when I'm just a kid?" And um, that's really important. I think you guys uh, you have to realize as kids that people are listening to what you're saying. Your parents and your aunts and uncles and grandma and grandpa and your friends' parents they want to hear what you have to say. Um, so all you have to do is just start the conversation. If you see someone using a plastic straw, say. Um, start the conversation with them. Hey, did you know that plastic straws aren't so great for the environment? And they might ask you why or what should I do then? And you can tell them, well, plastic is bad. It breaks down into microplastics that are hurting our animals. What you can do instead is use a metal straw or don't use a straw at all. Um, so it might seem like a, a big looming thing to do to spread your knowledge. It sounds kind of scary. Um, but all you really have to do is just talk. Talk to people, talk to your friends, your classmates, your teachers about what you learned, ask them questions. They may ask you questions. Um, and that's the best way to spread knowledge is just to really have a conversation. It's not something scary. It's something we do every day. You might not even realize it. It's, it's very easy to do, especially as kids. Everybody wants to hear what you guys have to say because you guys are so smart. We can also be role models. You know, if you see a piece of litter, pick it up. Um, you show your, so show your friends that, you know, what you do and just do it naturally. Just do it as if, you know, it's part of your everyday routine. And, and a lot of times people pick up on that and they'll think, oh, that's a really good idea. I, I'll give you a quick example. When we go on, go to the beach, I mean, I always, 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 always walk the beach for that all around tan, but I'll carry a plastic bag with me so that I could actually, as I'm walking, I could pick up trash. And, you know, you see more, pe more and more people doing that now. In fact, the, 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 my, it took my family a while to catch on, but they do that as well. So as I said, being a role model, and kids are great role models for one another. So we would love to see everybody out there. When you see a piece of litter, pick it up and put waste in the best place possible. Mm -hmm. I did see one more question. I think a few people had this question that if, they, if they're listening in on this on their own and didn't go through their troop leaders, how do they get the patch and everything? And I believe, Denise, if you want to help me out with this, when you guys get the survey, after this event, it's going to ask you, uh, I think your troop leader's address, Denise, if you want to take over. Yeah, so it'll be, um, it'll be their individual address. Most of the girls um, signed up individually. Um, there are only a couple troops. Um, so if, if you didn't sign up with your troop, don't worry. It'll be mailed to your house. Right, okay. Yes, just make sure you fill out that survey then, because that is how we will get, uh, 
the info from you guys on where to send everything and everything like that. So please do fill out that survey when, when it does come out to you guys. And thank you guys. I've seen a lot of, of awesome comments in the chat, a lot of love going around, and we're so happy to be able to, hear, to be here and talk with you guys today. Um, we appreciate your, your, your guys saying thank you and everything. We were very happy to do it. It's our pleasure to, to sit here and talk to you guys. Like we said, education is, our, is most important, um, and we love to spread our knowledge and, and everything with you guys, so we're happy to be here with you guys. Um, and again, if you have any questions or you want to just further just the discussion and find out more, send us some emails, call us, um, tag us on Facebook, Instagram, anything like that, and we will be able to get in touch with you guys. Thank and you guys. we'll be doing more with, with Keep Pinellas Beautiful too. So, um, you know, check their, their websites and their resources and we'll let you know when we partner off again with them, which we're really excited about. Yes, as you guys have heard, most of us uh, here have been Girl Scouts when we were younger as well. So we're very happy to be partnering and, and giving back to an organization that we love so much as well. Um, so keep an eye out, like Jenny said, for Girl Scouts partnering with you guys again or with us again. And then again, you can you can look on our website on your own and participate on your own as well. So I think we have answered all of our questions um, that we had pop up. Leslie, is that right? Yep, you guys did a great job. All the questions are answered. Okay, great. Um, so we will get ready to, to log out here again. Remember, World Oceans Day is Monday, but we can celebrate our oceans all, all year round. Um, please contact us with questions. If you want to participate in a cleanup, um, just let us know. We're here for you guys. We're here to help connect you to your local affiliates. Um, and again, that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much. It's been a great time. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you.